Greetings, members, one and all of the Salvation Nation. This government proposal is why we should stack physical gold. Let's explore. For those of you familiar with this channel, you know that I like to encourage folks to be diversified in their uh, investment portfolios. And I use that word investment uh, as a way to not only help to generate wealth, but also to preserve it and hedge within the, some of those strategies. So that means that not only am I not against investing in the stock market, but also from within the vehicles and the trading platforms, there are ways to hedge within those strategies. You know, I'm not a financial advisor, but I believe it's a good uh, idea to be protected as you make investments. And uh, that is certainly, uh, I believe, sound advice. And that can be done even within the electronic markets to a degree. Uh, we see that all the time. In fact, that's why in some cases, why some of these futures markets and the ETFs exist is so that people can easily um, be able to hedge themselves from within investment strategies. Um, and especially in this digital age, they can do that relatively easily. And gold and silver are a part of that, as we know. Now, we also know there's a there, there's a heavy derivative market in play, and we know that those areas are not tested in terms of the physical. When you buy SLV and even PSLV, which is supposed to be completely backed by the gold and silver that, that they um, are involved in, uh, you can cash those out, but it takes quite a bit of, of shares in order to cash out, uh, in order to get the physical form. And most people find that a gross inconvenience, and understandably so. So again, you can invest and you can hedge with gold and silver, not only in, in this regard, but also with mining stocks and other areas. Notwithstanding, what I'm about to share with you in terms of the of ways to be able to buy gold and silver digitally or to save with gold and silver is a little bit concerning because the government's involved, well, that should always concern you when the government gets involved in something with regards to gold and silver, but especially where, which government this is, this is happening in. A member of the community, an anonymous member of the community, sent me this article here from the Economic Times, IndiaTimes.com. And gold savings accounts are likely to check widening current account deficit. And there you go. Uh, this is what the Indian government is proposing to occur here. Wow. Let's take a look at it. The government may announce gold savings accounts in the upcoming budget as a means to discourage the purchase of the metal in its physical form as it seeks to put a check on widening current account deficit banking and trade sources said. Think about that for a moment. Where is some of the greatest demand per capita for gold in the world? India, physical gold. So when the government is trying to put a place in national gold policy that can efficiently connect all stakeholders of the gold value chain and help in creating a robust gold ecosystem in the country, if the gold savings account is introduced, it will be a step towards it is what they're saying there. Customers can open up such gold accounts in banks and put in money on a regular basis, the sources said. They can withdraw the deposit at the prevailing gold price at any time, they said. This is expected to reduce the demand for physical gold as an investment. Of course, you know what my feeling is regarding gold as investment. I don't see it as an investment. It is a hedge. It is a protection. It is a savings vehicle. But now... Essentially, the government here is saying that, hey, we're going to give you paper gold and not backed by the physical gold. Because if it was truly backed by the physical gold, then that means the demand would be stronger and as strong, if not stronger, because they would have to have the physical gold in inventory to be allocated to, for this specific purpose. Think about it, folks. This is 
open, out in the open as a proposal in India, uh, a country whose whole culture is centers around precious metals and gold, especially with regards to their dowry and just overall in savings. That's what's so neat about the Indian people. And most folks in the East, by the way, which includes China and many other nations in that part of the world. The article continues, it is likely that the gold savings will also get interest, <coughs> just like the sovereign gold bond. The yearly interest um, on SGB is 2.5%. Sources also indicate that there may be an option of accumulation of gold in the gold savings account. The entry in the gold savings account passbook will be made in terms of the amount of gold for which the deposits are made. All right, okay, well, they're saying it there, but, uh, you know, do we believe it? Why not just let people own the gold and store it themselves or find another way, private uh, entity to be able to store that gold? At the time of the withdrawal, banks will make debit entries and passbooks in terms of the amount of gold that is withdrawn, either in gold or in cash equivalent to the price of at least one gram of gold or in a multiple of one gram of gold at the prevailing rate of the date of withdrawals. The government may also come up with a regular framework for digital gold. India, the second largest consumer of gold in the world, <coughs> meets most of its annual requirements of 800 to 850 tons through imports. India's gold imports, which has a bearing on the country's current account deficit, more than doubled to $38 billion during April through December of this fiscal year, the current account deficit was $9.6 billion in the quarter ended September 30th, 2021. Banking circles say that the matter has been discussed with the government. The government is keen to make the gold market more organized and develop the precious metal as an asset class, which suggests that the commodity will no longer be seen as an undisclosed treasure but as an investment product. Well, okay, there you go. And it's, and that's just it. I think that's a fool's errand. And, uh, you know, when you give the government or banking institutions control of your gold, uh, you know, it, it is of a concern. Anytime you store gold off site, and by the way, with a custodian, uh, that creates counterparty risk. But I digress. And I'm not against storing it off site if you trust the storage facility. In fact, I do it in a different way uh, with trusted uh, colleagues, and uh, but nonetheless, there's that's a whole different conversation. The Reserve Bank of India can regulate these gold savings accounts and can ask the banks to hedge against gold. If this happens, then it will be a good thing for the gold trade. We have seen how well the SGB has been accepted in the Indian market. The government will also look at strengthening the digital gold transactions. Uh, I think just lost my place here. Um, and so they're trying to make this thing good, here, uh, uh, justify this thing here, but I'll put the government essentially in charge of a lot of Indian gold and be able to regulate it. Um, it's interesting. Regulate the gold trade and the amount that comes in to prevent the price from going crazy. And I think that's what they're looking to happen here, especially uh, because when you, when the gold is in the people's hands, they have the power. When the gold is in the government's hands, well, look who has the power. He who has the gold has the power. That's a paraphrase from what it had said at one time. But nonetheless, the government may fix the minimum deposit equivalent. And um, usually it's at one grand they're sh saying here. The gold savings account will also enable rule and it to be Come a part of the organized and formal gold trade. All right, there you go. Organized and formal. They're interesting. Uh, so, uh, what is this? Uh, how does this end here? It says the government has already taken steps to formalize the country's gold business by introducing gold monetization scheme, sovereign gold bond, and manded, mandatory hallmarking and introduction of the hallmark unique identification number for each piece of jewelry. <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, again, government uh, getting involved in these types of things has never really been a good idea and it always is more um, opening up to corruption 
And uh, that's one of the fears that I have with it. Obviously, you want safe gold. You want gold that's genuine. And there's a lot of it that certainly can be passed on. But there's ways to test gold. Gold has such unique properties that uh, more than likely you will be able to discover whether or not something is real or fake gold through existing testing mechanisms. <coughs> Even the different carrots. But most of the Indian gold is going to be a high carat, high purity, 18 or above. And nonetheless, uh, what is it about? It, it is about being able to preserve your wealth. It is about empowering people and people uh, from within cultures and empowering cultures. And, and gold is such an important part of the Indian culture. Uh, this, I believe, flies in the face of that from what the government is proposing here. So very, very interesting news here, and I think it it also t sends a two-pronged message. Number one is it's about government control, and it's about um, th that alone, government being involved in the gold trade and gold market along with the banks is one reason why we should stack physical gold. The other prong is that it's maybe the government is running scared that gold prices are going to go sky high because of the increased demand in India and of course around the world too as we are seeing at this very moment uh, there's a lot of concern there's a lot of concern in the world economically geopolitically and uh, and many other different factors uh, that are coming into play that should send people running to safe havens what is the ultimate safe haven and yes people talk about silver but ultimately gold is the best safe haven vehicle for you and you, the, those you love. And so I believe it is incumbent upon us to consider having some physical gold in our stack. And again, this does not mean that I'm against being able to diversify even from within precious metals, whether it be mining stocks, whether it be ETFs and the like. There's ways to hedge uh, using gold in that regard. I believe it's best done through the private enterprise, through the free markets, and not through government entities. But nonetheless, I believe having physical gold is paramount. Uh, no matter how you invest or what you uh, consider to be um, uh, your strategies here, it's good to have, as part of that strategy, physical gold on hand in your possession. So there you go. Thanks again to the anonymous person who sent this information to me. Very fascinating indeed. Very important, especially in these times, especially considering which government's involved and um, how it affects culture. Stack physical gold. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. We'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.